Okay, today what I want to do is I'm going to actually adjust some reels and play with them. But before we do that, I want you to realize that there's a lot of things involved in adjusting of reels and, and maintaining them that happens that you probably don't pay attention to. And so the information on these is in the tech manual. And so we're going to have a piece of information out of the tech manual at each one of these reels so that we're not just following something that we're pulling out of the air. I want you to know where to find it because you're not going to remember this. You're going to see some of your experience a little bit, but there's information out there so that you know what you're doing. And they're going to give us here just some, some daily maintenance and monthly maintenance. What are the things you should be doing with this reel? And look at it on a daily basis when you guys are dealing with these reels. You know, adjusting reel, the bed knife and stuff is, is something you'll check, but there's other things while you're doing that. And one of the first things you want to look for or do on a daily basis is make sure there's no water in the bearings. I can't emphasize that enough. Make sure you have grease in the grease gun. Make sure it's the right type of grease, and the right type of grease is what? It depends. It needs to be something that is compatible with it. John Deere is using corn head grease. They're using that because it doesn't absorb water. It has flow characteristics, so it flows into the bearing. And so find out what they recommend and use the recommended grease for it. Don't just use whatever happens to be handy. Purge the water out. When you get done washing this thing at the end of the day, that's when it's hot. And when you wash it, it cools down. When something cools down, and it, it draws, it creates a vacuum, and it draws the water in. So if you grease it after watering or washing, it'll wash and it'll push the grease back out. And that's the best time to grease the reels. So check that. Visually check for sharpness. And so it's pretty easy to reach down and just feel your reels. How do they feel? If they're sharp, are they rounded? What kind of condition are they? Um, turn the reels in reverse. You don't want to turn them in forward direction. Turn them in reverse. Uh, you want to rotate it, and the reason why I'm rotating it backwards is if there's debris or something in here, if I rotate it forward, you're bringing those two cutting edges together and it can damage it. If this is on a machine, it's going to have a cutting unit bolted onto it. It's not going to turn that easy. And so be careful because you're like, all of a sudden it might slip and it'll pinch your finger. And so you can really damage yourself bad with reels. So be careful if it doesn't want to turn very easy, you know, Position your hand to where if it does spin easy, your hand doesn't get pinched in an area. Take, your, take a, a wood handle or something, a hammer handle, and try to turn it with that. Or you just take the motor off. Most of the motors are designed to come off real easy. On the Toros, you loosen the two half-inch nuts just a couple of turns. You rotate it, and they pop off. Toros, or uh, the Jacobsons, the older style have four bolts. You got to take the bolts all the way off and it slides off. It's a little bit more complicated, but not terrible. The newer ones just have a little lever. You pull up on it and rotate it, motor comes off. So they've made it to where they come off very easy so that you can check it without the resistance of the motor on there. Because you need to know that. You want to listen to it? What does it sound like? Do I hear a reel the bed knife? If I can't spin this thing and the motor's not on, as soon as I turn the motor on, it's going to do damage. And so you want light to no contact. And so a light contact, really light, will be fine. It's going to help hone the two edges, and it'll actually help um, wear it down a little bit and actually sharpens it. And so having no contact will lead to dull edges. Really light contact helps hone it in, and it'll keep it relatively sharp. You get heavy contact, it will damage the two cutting edges. You don't want that to happen. And so listen to it. What does it sound like? How easy does it spin? That doesn't sound very good there. And so we'd want to check and see why. Is there just grass caught in there? Or is there sand? Or what do we need to do? So you'll look at it. Grit. There's some other things that you tend to not change. We t we're going to check height of cut. We're going to check reel to bed knife adjustment, but there's some other things that people tend to not look at at all, and this shield up here is adjustable. And there's a reason why it's adjustable. If I have grass catchers on here, if I'm in wet grass, wet grass tends to, to fall sooner than dry grass. So in wet conditions, this shield will come up. I'm trying to get more height. I want to fill the basket, not right in the front, but in the back, and come forward. 
as the summer goes on it gets really dry if you've got that thing really steep it'll shoot right over the basket and it won't even go in the basket so in dry condition the shield comes down wet conditions you can adjust it up most people just run it in one operation and they can't understand why things are uneven there's an adjustment procedure and there's a reason wet dry conditions